In ancient times, India produced some of the most sublime art of the world. The tradition of the art of India was deeply connected with the philosophy of this land. The classic art of India presented a sense of the great harmony of the world. These paintings brought to us a great sense of the peace of the spirit. Across the walls of Ajanta were painted bodhisattvas, the seekers of truth. They were set amidst a world full of the beauty of overflowing nature and yet they looked within. It was this life of the inner self which pervaded the art of ancient India. In 1498, Vasco da Gama from Portugal discovered the sea route to India and reached the shores of Calicut. His arrival ushered in an era of significant changes in every walk of life in India. The Dutch, the French and the English followed the Portuguese in quick succession to set up trading centers in India. By the 18th century, the British East India Company had outmaneuvered the Dutch and the French from most parts of India. The company, as it came to be known, then expanded beyond trading activities into the area of political control. There was an influx of Europeans in India. They came as merchants and officials, as well as travelers and adventurers. Legends and myths surrounding India seemed to come alive for them when they reached Indian shores. Maria Graham, one such European, was struck by the grandeur of the port city of Calcutta. She wrote, The river was covered with boats of every shape. Villas adorned the banks. The scene became enchanting. And we felt that we were approaching a great capital. The Europeans saw scenes of unimaginable variety and color. India was seen as a place of great mystery and exotic appeal. The great diversity of costumes and occupations fascinated the Europeans who wanted to carry back with them some of the native flavor of this land. The Europeans wanted to have a record of their stay in India. They wished to capture all the variety around them through paintings and drawings. They wanted souvenirs to take back home and to send to their relatives and friends. As Lady Nugent said, I intend to get drawings of everything. I mean to begin a collection of curiosities of all sorts. Paintings which were made by Indian artists for European patrons, who were usually related in some way to the East India Company, have come to be called company paintings. They have a distinct character which sets them apart from all other schools of painting in India. The Europeans found the world and culture around them in India to be entirely different from what they were used to. They wished to record the many colorful details of this exotic world. They made albums which depict couples belonging to different occupations. 
There are also paintings of men and women dressed in the costumes of different castes. All these are painted with a keen sense of realism of the observed sort. There is an emphasis on light and shade in the manner of European watercolour paintings. There are many vivid depictions of Indian festivals and temples thronging with colourful crowds. The new patrons commissioned the making of many drawings and paintings of the monuments that they saw around them. Mount Stuart Elphinstone writes, The mosques, the minarets, tombs and gardens of so many Mohammedan cities, the marble courts of the palace of the Mughals, peoples with the recollection of former times, and surrounded with the remains of fallen greatness, could not but affect the imagination. These images of a bygone era are a valuable and interesting record. Often they provide details of architecture that may have been lost with the passage of time. The paintings made during the company period reflect the changes that were shaping the political, economic and social history of India at that time. The local courts were losing their economic and political independence to the foreign rulers. Artists who had till then enjoyed a position of prestige and patronage in the courts were now forced to look for new patrons and buyers for their sustenance. There are instances where artists carried their paintings like common wares in baskets upon their heads and sold them at railway stations and marketplaces. Naturally, they adapted their talents and manner of working to suit the tastes of the new patrons. The school of painting that thus emerged was quite different from any in the past, not only in technique, but also in spirit.